are ya? Welcome! So a week ago, I put up a video on the channel showing my entire new order and related, so Joy Division Factory Records as well, DVD collection. And I said near the end of that video, I've been thinking for a long time now about doing a video showing all my new order bootleg CDs. But the trouble is, I've got so many of them, it would be such a long video and I wouldn't be able to go into any detail about any of them really. I'd just be, you know, showing them one after the other in quick succession and it'd be pretty dull and not particularly very fulfilling for either the maker, me, or the viewer, you. But Stevie's Vinyl Cupboard to the rescue. I'm leaving a link for Stevie's New Order set list video at the top of this description. Make sure you go and watch that and also give him a sub if you haven't already. A really great guy and a vital part of the vinyl community. And most importantly of all, like me, is a massive New Order fan. So what Stevie did recently was he made a video about three New Order set lists, three New Order gigs, and they're all ones that he'd been to as well and he'd got them on bootleg. It might have been cassette, I think, for all of them. Stevie will let me know if I'm wrong about anything in the comments. And he gave me credit for helping him think of the idea and to motivate him to make the video. And I thought, you know, that'd be a good compromise, really. Instead of showing all my bootlegs in what would be an overlong and not particularly very interesting video, I'll just show three of them. You know, talk about the set lists in each of them. So this is sort of a thread response, really, to Stevie's Vinyl Cupboard. I don't know how many other people would get involved in this, but if you are interested, this is about New Order gigs and New Order set lists, obviously, but if you wanted to do something similar but with a different band, a favourite band or artist of yours, that would be perfectly fine, I think, really. Just let me know in the comments that you've posted a video kind of in this vein and um, I'll check it out, and I'm sure Stevie's Vinyl Cupboard will as well. I've only seen New Order in concert once in my life, which given that I've been a fan of them, really, a proper fan since about 93, 94, but really I've been enjoying their music and listening to them since I was little more than a toddler, really. It's pretty shameful, but I've collected a lot of bootlegs over the years. I've chose three here that all come after the period that Stevie covered in his video. He chose three gigs that he'd been to and that he got the bootlegs of. Uh, between 1983 and 1986, I think. Um, you'll be able to see all the specific information when you watch his video. Obviously, uh, two of these gigs here I didn't go to, but the last one I did. Uh, we'll get started with the gig that's on this CD. There's actually two gigs on this CD, but I'm going to focus on the second CD. Uh, the CD is called Thin Ice, and this is a two-disc bootleg. So the first disc is a gig that was recorded at the venue in Blackpool on the 30th of August 1982. If anyone, any New Order fans are watching and they were at that, or they're familiar with the set list, the gig itself somehow, then please let me know in the comments. But the one I want to focus on is this one on disc two. It was the headline set at the festival of the 10th summer in Manchester at the GMEX Centre on the 19th of July 1986. Um, so the festival of the 10th summer was a big event, mainly music related, but it also had to do with film and graphic design and, you know, just basically a celebration of Manchester really in 1986. and. The 10th summer is referring to it being the 10th anniversary of when the Sex Pistols played at the Free Trade Hall, or was it the Lesser Free Trade Hall, one or the other of those, in Manchester a decade prior. And it was organised by Tony Wilson mainly, a very sort of heavily sponsored and organised by Factory Records, and um, the actual music portion, or one of the music portions, had a lot of big Manchester and Manchester friendly acts at the festival and New Order were the headliners. So on 19th of July 1986 New Order start their gig or their headline set with Elegia which is the very kind of 
downbeat but evocative instrumental from the Low Life album from 85. Next up, Shell Shock, which was a standalone single. Uh, it did feature on the soundtrack to the Pretty in Pink movie though, which funnily enough I saw for the very first time only a few days ago. It was alright, good soundtrack on it, great soundtrack, but the storyline was a little bit ropey in my opinion, it wasn't particularly very original. But the acting for the most part was very good, certainly by Molly Ringwald, but yeah. Um, next up, Paradise, which was a track from the 86 album Brotherhood. Next, Bizarre Love Triangle, always been one of my favourites, Bizarre Love Triangle, a live staple really for New Order. Then Way of Life, another Brotherhood track, State of the Nation, which was a single in 86 and it was on, I don't know if it was on all the original copies of Brotherhood, I think it might have been added to like reissues of it, because I know I've got it on the Brotherhood album, but I'm not sure it was originally on it. Um, Stevie or another New Order fan out there might be able to clarify that for me. Then it's Face Up, which was on Low Life. Another Low Life track follows it, The Perfect Kiss. And then we get a special guest appearance, which doesn't happen that often at New Order gigs. But Ian McCulloch, the lead singer of Echo and the Bunnymen, joins New Order on stage for a performance of Ceremony, and I believe he comes in late on it, but you know, probably didn't have a lot of rehearsal time, and that wasn't his song, it wasn't his band, so we can forgive him, I think. And they close out with the 1982 single, Temptation. So really good gig, that. Not one of my all-time favourite gigs, but I just think it's quite an important one, really. It was at that period between Brotherhood and Substance 1987 for New Order. You know, kind of when things were still relatively rosy for them in relation to their personal relationships. Um, I think sort of from Touched by the Hand of God onwards, it was a little bit more kind of difficult for them to get along all the time and technique was a fairly difficult thing to record. And then they had a bit of a break and then came back with Republic and then had a longer break, but yeah. So that was the Festival of the Tenth Summer gig on the 19th of July 86 from Manchester on CD2 of The Thin Ice. <laughs> The second of the three I've chosen is one that I don't know if it's counted as one of the greatest New Order gigs. I really like it. It's one of my favourites, actually, this to listen to, to put on. But it's kind of bittersweet, certainly. And it's live at the Reading Festival, 93. And the reason why this is a bittersweet set list, a bittersweet gig, is because they split up pretty much straight afterwards. I say split up, it was never an official split and a lot of New Order fans, myself included, because by the following year and by the time of the best of New Order, I was officially a super fan. I loved them and wanted everything that they'd ever done. But I think many of us thought, well, they're just having a long extended break and they should get back together before the end of the decade. And to be fair, they did. Although they didn't release another album until 2001, but they did get back together for certain performances in 1998. So live at the Reading Festival, this is quite a heavily bootlegged gig, this. You can find this concert on CD if you know where to look from quite a few places. It's quite a professionally done CD, this. Um, it doesn't really match the cover art or anything at all, to be honest. It's all a bit sort of haphazard, but I like the professional looking shiny side of that CD really. 
the date of this, it doesn't say the date, I don't think anywhere, but I did look it up and it was the 29th of August 1993, New Order with the headliners on the Sunday of the 93 Reading Festival and ironically their big return would be at the Reading Festival five years later but originally it was supposed to be the Phoenix Festival but that got cancelled and then there was no more Phoenix Festivals ever again sadly. This one is from the Republic period. Republic was their album from 93. They open out with Ruined in a Day off Republic, that was the second single off that album. Then the lead single off that album and one of a lot of people's favourite New Order singles, at least certainly of the kind of later 1990s period, Regret. Round and Round is next, which featured on Technique from 1989. Number four is one of my favourite New Order tracks and a bit of an underrated song, I think, because it doesn't really get a lot of love with New Order fans, but I think it's phenomenal. It's World, The Price of Love. That was a top 20 single in 1993, the third one from the Republic album. Track number five is one that was off Brotherhood and does get played live, or at least did intermittently throughout the years, as it is when it was credited on here as as it is and when it was, but there's no and in it. That's a misprint. Track number six, another one from Republic, Everyone Everywhere. Number seven, True Faith. Temptation was number eight. Number nine, Perfect Kiss. Number 10, Fine Time, which was the lead single from Technique that came out in December 1988 and got to number 11, I think it was, on the singles chart. It just missed the top 10. Track 11, Blue Monday. Everyone knows that. Track number 12, uh, another one of my all-time favourites. Uh, album track from Technique, Dream Attack. Not something I think they've played live particularly much but I love that so much one of my all-time favorite New Order songs that and closing out with Bizarre Love Triangle they've spelt bizarre with two Z's there naughty closes out the live at the Reading Festival set list I really like that fantastic gig decent ish sound quality it was taped from the mixing board the mixing desk bean bootlegs all these have kind of some sound louder than others some sound just a little bit more muffled than others but it's fun to get bootlegs really so live at the Reading Festival from 29th of August Of course, the third and final set list to choose for Stevie's thread here was an absolute no-brainer. I've shown this briefly on the channel before at least a couple of times now. It had to be the gig that I was at. You know, to own a CD, an album, even if it's a bootleg of a gig of an event that you were at, just is extra special really. So when a contact of mine on Facebook had told me that he'd got this gig from Wolverhampton in 2015 that was an instant purchase i was at this my first ever new order gig i'd seen monaco previously i'd been to other gigs but for some reason it took me till i was 35 years old before i got around seeing new order you know well over 20 years after i became a fan but uh, better late than never this is a two disc album but it is just one gig there's just no edits on here, it even plays out all the crowd noise and stuff in between the end of the normal set and the encore, which lasts for, it says 2 minutes 13 seconds on here, uh, so that's classed as a track. 
what an eye, what an eye. I could sit here and ramble on about it, but I won't because I just want to go through the tracks on here. So this took place at the Civic Hall, Wolverhampton, on the 24th of November 2015. Got to keep this case open because it's got all the track listing on here. But I'll have put a lot of information on screen, no doubt. Opens out with the intro, which is a pre-recorded intro. I think it's Das Rheingold, I think, which is some classical thing that is very familiar. I think it's been used in plenty of films and stuff. Track number two, Singularity, which was from the new album. It had only recently come out at this point, Music Complete, which is a fairly decent album. It's not New Order's best, but it was just great to have them back, and it was literally their first proper new studio album in almost a decade, if you don't count the Lost Sirens album, which isn't technically a new studio album it's kind of sort of outtakes and rejected tracks anyway ceremony is track number three track number four crystal which was from get ready in 2001 track five the lead single from music complete restless track number six and i love the fact that they played this so much because it's another one that's been one of my all-time favorites lonesome tonight which was the b-side to thieves like us in 1984 um, I fell in love with that song the first time I heard it, which would have been on an old edition of Substance that I had. And um, it's not one that I think they played live an awful lot for many years. I think they played it live a lot on many of the bootlegs I've got from around, you know, 1984, maybe going into 85, but not really an awful lot after that. So I really loved hearing that and seeing them, not just hearing it, but you know, I hear it when I listen to the CDs. Number seven, Your Silent Face, which was from Power, Corruption and Lies. Number eight, Tutti Fruity, another single from Music Complete. And then following with another single from Music Complete, People on the High Line. There's a nice mixture of new stuff from the album. Because when the touring and the new albums come out, they've got to promote it. But there's a nice mixture of the newer stuff that is okay but it's nothing ultra special but they do play a lot of the classics and like in the case of lonesome tonight a lot of not forgotten but maybe under the radar b-sides and album cuts and things like that track number 10 a wonderful version of bizarre love triangle that i remember going absolutely ape shit for number 11 waiting for the sirens call which was the title track from that album track 12 plastic from music complete Number 13, The Perfect Kiss. Number 14, a wonderful version of True Faith. Always like the sort of modern mix that they do with True Faith. It borrows a lot from the Perfecto mix that came out in 1994, but they sort of do things to it and improve it really from what Perfecto did. Temptation is number 15, and then we get the great track 16 encore break, where we just listen to the crowd for nearly two and a half minutes. And track 17, uh, first in the encore, is the Joy Division song, Atmosphere. Track number 18, another Joy Division one, Love Will Tear Us Apart. Um, so good to hear Joy Division played. I remember they had the graphics up of Ian Curtis on the video screen at that point. So it was a really sort of heartfelt moment, really, for everyone there. And finishing number 19 in, yeah, it's a big set list, really, isn't it? Blue Monday. Not just as a memento of the night, of the greatest gig of my life, but just as a great set list and a great CD to listen to. Then uh, Civic Hall, Wolverhampton from November 2015. I was there and it was phenomenal. <laughs>
So that is my three new order set lists. Many thanks to Stevie's Vinyl Cupboard for starting this sort of thread. I don't know if he intends it to be a thread as such, but as I said earlier, if people want to get involved and do this, be it with New Order or whatever act that you want, just pick out three gigs, maybe three that you've been to, you know, preferably three that you've got on some sort of recorded format, be it official or unofficial, and um, I'd love to see what you've chosen. Thank you to everyone for watching, with special thanks that go to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. I'm going to go now, and I do hope that you join me again for my next New Order related and live concert and bootleg related video. Cheers everyone. See ya!